I think that so-called five minutes of fame right, was the downfall of my previous venture. Welcome to another episode of the Tapao Show. In this series days off, we follow a guest from the FMB industry on the day off to see what they get up to, have a meal with them, have a bit of tea, and maybe spill a bit as well. For today, our guest is Tsen Long, the owner of Rough Guys Coffee. Hi, my name is Tsen Long and I'm the owner of Rough Guys Coffee. On my off days, I like to... I don't know, it depends, I'll see my mood. It's not wrong. Today, Tsen Long, you chose Shunfu Market as well on the stop, so... Why are we here today? I'm actually doing a new venture with my friend. That means uh, there will be a, like a third gen vegetable shop lah. As in, like they will supply vegetables and stuff like that. Yeah, so we are working on it to uh, to, to convert everything to e-commerce. Shumfu Market is actually where my hawker journey begins. So I actually started at uh, the bread shop in front. This, this bread shop. Yeah. This. <laughs> so no, I actually no, saying the name. The fresh bread shop. Back then, when I wanted to do hawker, I was like thinking whether I can adapt to that lifestyle. But how do you even get to the part of like what made you all of a sudden think Want to about, do hawker? Yeah, then to start, start. Uh, F&B, food, bread, whatever. Yeah, F&B has been my dream since young. I wanted to be a cook. I didn't get into Shatek. I got, I actually got uh, so-called blacklisted. Do we want to know why? <laughs> uh, I, I quarreled with the head of the department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then? Went out to do some part-time here and there F&B. Uh, but there wasn't stability. Lah. So... I went on to do to, to supply chili sauce and stuff like that, but things didn't work out. Uh, went to become salesman. This was all before here. And that was like at age what roughly? Car sales was right after NS. Right. Yeah, so after NS, lost lah. You know, like you think you got two years to plan. But actually after the two years very short. So when you come out right here, you'll be like, oh what should I do? So I went to study part-time and then uh work full-time, do retail and then Whatever lah, but it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Basically, just every job. Yeah, every job that I can find. I got this opportunity to do car sales, so I did car sales for about one year. It it was bringing in the money, but I wasn't happy. Yeah, so I actually got very depressed. On the way to work, I got anxiety attack and stuff like that. Then what made you come here? Like why show market? So right after that, I took a break. I went overseas, you know, to 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 see other cultures and to realign myself like, to see what I want to do for the rest of my life. I went to Taiwan and Japan. That's where I realized that I keep... I was very captivated by people running F&B business, people cooking, people doing their mission plus. I can like just sit there and walk, drink, drink beer, whatever, right? And watch them prep. So when I came back, I want to align myself with like local culture. So that's where I, I, I thought like, why not I try doing hawker. <laughs> Ever waited 10 minutes for a fucking hockey meal? I think I saw one half meal before. 10 fucking minutes. Why that? 10 minutes okay or? You wait 10 minutes for one half meal before. You can stir 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 run already. Bro, you need to cold water, then a muda QQ bro. I told my friends about it, which is the, the vegetable shop. Mm. His name is Xiang Ke. And then he came up to buy stuff, then he saw this they have this poster saying like they're hiring part-timer. Okay. Then he sent me the photo, I straight away messaged them. And they said okay. So I just came down work. I don't even know how much I was getting paid. I never even asked for the pay because I really want to adapt to that hawker lifestyle to understand. Then, but what what like struggles or difficulties do you think uh, you, you know like hawker? Yeah, I mean your first job, right? Yeah, I mean you went in straight. I didn't realize like you know making tiny bread like this, right? It's such a tough job. We see all the big organization, right? They have all the equipment. Because it's a small shop, so a yeah. lot of things. So this are... one small shop, right? From rolling dough, right? I can like roll dough the whole day, ah. Uh. After that, my hands start shivering. Wow, damn painful, you know. Every time end shift, right? The boss, say, hey, you want to bring back home, uh? I confirm bring one. 
Because bro, I roll until like that already, <laughs> I must take, yeah. <laughs> that was an eye, eye opener for me. Uh. But as time goes by and it's season ready, I wow, feel like damn strong. Uh. Crispy letters, correct? Wow. Maybe last time, no, that's why I see that. We stay here for interview. Uh. <laughs> Actually, some of them. Come in first, I come first. Don't come in, don't go. No, no, don't eat close fully. Don't eat close fully. So, here mostly they keep their organic foods. No, it's good uh, because this area actually Bishan got a lot of. Shufu got a lot of people coming. Yeah, and a lot of uh, Angmos also. Because yeah, yes. yeah. private estate, but. Yeah, so actually quite good. Then yeah, they want to have the this local. Is basically another Holland they want the local experience, but they want the. With a bit of modern. Western, like, uh, modern. Cook, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this area is. No matter, this is like the Holland V of the West. Uh. Of the North. Uh. Of the so Central. We, Central. We, we, we're gonna make some changes to this. So. Right. We're gonna change Lim Kopi. What's that? Lim Kopi? What's that? What's Lim Kopi? What's that? What's that? 我应该这边的，带我去普通巴士。Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 去 Columbus 啊。Columbus？ Columbus 那个咖啡。哦、oh, Columbus 呀。我没有喝过 Columbus 哎。你去 try 啊，没事很多人。不要啊。不要啊。他们没有 try 我的，<笑>我 try 他的。哈哈哈哈哈。谢谢，爸爸。After the bakery, you had another hawker gig, right? Yeah. So that's about the Bing Hook Cooks. That was at Hong Lim, right? Yeah. How did you end up there from the bakery to? After this gig, right, I was looking to start my own hawker. Mm -hmm. Jason, he he was looking to to start his own hawker store also. Mm. So he, he knows that I'm in a hawker, ma. So he asked me like how the bidding process and everything was done. After that, I went to help him for to do part time. Then his business partner and him fell out. Mm -hmm. Back then, lah. Mm -hmm. So he he was facing some financial issue. Then he asked me like if I want to buy in, lah. Mm -hmm. And that's where the rest was history, lah. Like we, we elevated the whole thing, lah. That's how you got involved in the bank yes. at the hawker joint. Because mm -hmm. uh, you guys appear in the newspapers and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, that was all about the takeout and like two young guys. Yes. Running the uh, hawker shop. Back then, that there was like a lot of people going through like retrenchment and stuff. That's where our friend approached us and asked, "Hey, since you guys doing food, right? They want to donate money, lah." Help, help right. people. Right. That's how the whole foundation started. Okay. Yeah. Then after that, slowly, slowly, the funds ran out. Then we start to came out from our own pocket, lah. Mm. So back then, before all this, right, we actually got a following already. Yeah. Yeah. But after all this, right, the following actually elevated, mm. which wasn't our intention, lah. But somehow, just got too much attention. Wow, well, hundred plus, bro. Looking that. But let me see what else is there. But last bottle. Huh? Really? Ah? Nah. Uh, one cup of curry, one hundred plus. Ah, what you want, sir? No. Eh? Too quiet. Yeah, hey, I got twenty cent. Thank you. Wait. Can I take this? No, no, no. No, no. Thank you. Ah. Wait, wait. Actually, I'm very curious. Eh, how long have you opened already? Very long, eh? So the brand Bing Who Cooks was already started before you joined in. Yes. So how how does the brand name like before you even got into it, right? How how did it resonate with you in the first place? When we grew up, we are all, uh, I mean, from from my side lah. You know, we are all quite boisterous. Ma. Sometimes I hang out with friends who are very loud, very yep. noisy, always disturb people. Like yep. people still call me Abing. Yeah. But the identity is there lah. Mm. That's how I I kind of resonated with resonated the... with the brand. Yeah. But of course, that was back then lah, right? I try to add humor into my mm. service. Mm. Yeah, so usually when I do service, I try to make the service fun uh, among our our crew and try to make the service fun for the customers also. So interactions and everything, it was my forte lah mm. in a hawker because hawker you can choose to be rude and people will still come. Sure. If your food is good lah. <laughs> right? So how does uh, three years tenure and in Hong? In hawker right, every three years you need to review your. Rental, no, agreement, yeah. yeah, and then uh, there will be increment and stuff lah. Yeah, but we didn't even proceed to extend because we know we want to move out. We didn't want to do hawker for the rest of our life okay. because we were surrounded by old hawkers, right? Yeah, and a lot of them really got like sickness and yeah. stuff. So we thinking like, hey, can we really do this for the rest of our life? Mm. Even though we were making like decent income, I would say we wanted to elevate the whole brand. We wanted to move out. Mm. That was actually the idea I proposed before I buy in my shares. I told him my direction and are we on the same page? Mm. Uh, our values align. Mm. Yeah, then from there we are quite aligned with the direction, but our values don't really align, lah. So I think that was 
the first red flag. Yeah. Uh, video, video. Macam ni. Yeah. You wait. When come out, I let you know lah. When you guys moved from Hong Lim to New Road, the restaurant, right? How did you feel from Hawker to the restaurant? The transition was quite huge because we have to set up the kitchen ourselves. We have to source for manpower and everything, right? Because back then in Hawker, we don't really need manpower. Yeah. Two of us. Set up, very simple. We don't have to source anything because any already built up your hood, your whatever thing. The, the shop had yeah, came it's, along. It's definitely F&B approved. Yeah. The most major part for us will be the accounting. Because now it become more say like a legitimate business and then there's more administrative work to yes, come along. Yes, and uh, everything is accounted for. Yeah. So like in, in Hawker, right, we don't really need to care about we need to keep the invoice, we need yep. to keep, right? Yeah. Because uh, at the end of the day, right, it's like we know money will come. But then when you are in a restaurant concept, each and every money that goes in or out have to be accounted for. And managing of manpower. Before things happen, right, I will always plan for the worst. I, I always think that I don't have issue handling the manpower. I always like to bring humor into work, make the, the work fun. But I never think of them having like mental meltdowns, having stress because uh, be it personal life or work. Uh, because working hours are super long, right? And I wouldn't say like we are paying very high also. If you're scaling a business right from a very Let's just say I, I started a home business and then uh, you, you know like moving out then, to a bigger right. All of a sudden you're yes. dealing with so much more things. Yes, yes. I it's think those very, are very very different from what you originally started mm -hmm. out with. And you know if you're you never been exposed to these kind of things, then yes. all of a sudden you'll be thinking about these kind of things. Yeah, I think those those are good to take note lah. No, no. Uh, we drinking already, bye. We busy ah. We filming. What time? Uh, thirty minutes time lah. I think I need to go back work. Yeah, 30 minutes time. 30 minutes, one hour time. We, I, I go back to shop already. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Bye. Te one year tenure at New Road, right? Mm. How did it end? I, I actually had this cafe thing coming up. My business partner back then, he said he wants to be part of it also. He don't let me go out and do my own thing lah because he said it's a conflict of interest. Before this, we I actually contemplated to leave the business also because like I said, the first red flag was our value didn't align. I think partly also because of so much media attention and everything. Right? Uh, I, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to get that attention. I didn't want to do all those uh, media shoots and stuff like that also. So I took a back, back seat uh, on that. Lah. I think that so called five minutes of fame right, was the downfall of my previous venture. It's a very bittersweet feeling whenever people bring their brand out. Like, hey, you used to be from Bingo Cooks, right? You know, some people still recognize yeah, yeah. the kind of things. And to me, it's like, I was proud of the brand that I was part of. When you were there? Yeah. With all the media attention, he always get to say his piece. He always get to portray himself as like the hardworking guy. He do everything. People always screw him up, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not bad mouthing or what. But if everybody screw you up, then probably you have to think you are the problem. Uh. And there's always another side of yeah, the story. Uh, yes. There's always a si yeah. another side of the coin. Uh. If I'm in his situation, I would think uh, probably I'm the problem. Uh. Because it cannot be like, I work with you, then you screw me up. I work with cash, then cash screw me up. Cannot be like everybody screw me up, then it's everybody's problem. I'm not the problem. Uh. You know what I mean? Okay, so how this coffee thing started right, is I didn't even think of doing coffee at the start. But my cousin approached me and asked me if I'm interested uh, because he wants to invest in something like this. But why coffee? Before I started, I never even thought of learning coffee. As I drink more like alcohol, craft beers and natural wine, I grew to understand more of like these profiles as well. Right? Back then, during my old space, we had butler coffee. They were using our space at the daytime. Uh, I tried making my own coffee. I couldn't make. Then I realized like, why? Wow, hey, this is not as easy as it's it is. not like one plus one. Yeah, and then calibrating the coffee. Yeah. Back then, I was like, hey, wow, you taste so much coffee in the daytime one. Uh. Yeah, I, I didn't understand all this. Cause to me, it's like, I see a machine there. I think like, oh, it's automated one. Uh. It all comes down to what beans you're using. But it all, actually it all comes down to how you calibrate, how you, how strong your balance is, how good your balance is to, to eliminate whatever bad taste there is in the coffee, all you know, that kind of thing. 
and that's where I decided to take it seriously and go and learn art. So why rough guys coffee? In school we, we cannot make it one. Yeah, yeah. When we come out in life, the stereotype will be like you cannot make it in academics, right? That means you cannot make it in life. You know some people like, call me hey, this this abeng go out, confirm either die on the streets or, or, yeah. or cannot cannot make it in life one, you know that kind of thing. So we, we feel like we want to prove the stereotype wrong. Like uh, of course academics are important, but it doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define your life. We are having meeting lah, basically show and me, then we cannot think of anything and then we give up already. We close, we close the laptop, we close everything. We start, started talking about, hey, last time in school, how we got ourselves into trouble, you know, that kind of thing, you know, boys being boys lah. Then we like, hey, actually quite rough ah. Why don't we like rough guys coffee? Then we like, hey, actually quite nice. Then after that, we came out with a few logos, uh, but we decided to settle with uh, the, the cute logo lah. Because the name, I think, is quite intimidating. My end goal would be, I want to have a few businesses. Don't have to be FMB. I'm taking small steps, lah, baby steps towards my end goal. Because not young anymore. And I'm planning to stop ops as soon as I can. So that I can I can take a back seat more. Lah. So do you have any word of advice for anyone who might feel that they are of a similar background, like trying to do what you're doing? I wouldn't say I have any advice. Because at the end of the day, advices are always opinions. So what blueprint that work for me might not work for everybody or anybody, right? Most importantly, right, trust your instincts. Or uh, when you know there's a red flag, this is the biggest lesson I've learned throughout my years. Do you have anything you want to tell your ex-business partner? Uh...